We are back with chapter six, um, still talking about quadrilaterals, and this section is based on parallelograms. And just as a quick reference, if you see this shape right here, um, that's just the symbol for a parallelogram, kind of like this is a symbol for an angle, um, or this is a symbol for a tri uh, triangle, that symbol right there is going to be the symbol of a parallelogram. So what is a parallelogram? Well, the name says all about it. Parallel. So that's what you should kind of think about in your minds. It's a quadrilateral with parallel opposite sides. So quadrilateral means four-sided. Parallel means the sides are opposite. So there's two sets of parallel sides. The first one um, you have MN is parallel to PO, so MN is parallel to PO, that's one set, and then you have PM and NO are parallel as well. We're going to um, continue to talk about the list uh, or a list of properties that we can assume with a parallelogram. The first one in theorem 6.3 is a quad, if, it's, if a quadrilateral is a parallelogram, then the opposite sides are congruent. So that's our first property. Other than the definition, opposite sides are congruent. So we have opposite sides are parallel, and now we have opposite sides are congruent because of 6, 3. So JK would be congruent to ML, or, and JM is congruent to KL. So two sets of um, congruent sides. The next property is if a quadrilateral is a parallelogram, then opposite angles are congruent. And remember, opposite means across from, opposite side of the room. You are on different sides of the room. So um, first we have properties, uh, the opposite sides are congruent. Now our opposite angles are congruent. So if angle M was 105 degrees, opposite of that would be angle K, which angle K would be 105 degrees too. All right, that's property number two. Property number three tells us that consecutive angles are supplementary. Remember, consecutive, back-to-back um, -back touching. So in this picture, I would consider angle J and angle M consecutive. So if I added those two angles together, they would equal 180 degrees. So property number three, consecutive angles. And in consecutive angles, there will be two angles that you look at um, will equal 180 degrees. So you could also say that J plus K would equal 180. Um, you could also say K plus L equals 180. And then you could also say um, L plus M equals 180. All right, and the fourth property that we will be able to use is if a parallelogram has one right angle, so since J is 90 degrees, then all of them are 90 degrees. So K would be, L would be, and M would be, just because J is. So property number four says if one angle equals 90 degrees, then we can say all angles equal 90 degrees. All right, let's see how we can use these properties in different types of problems. So the first one is um, a parallelogram in our construction of maybe a stadium, kind of like we might be starting to build um, at the football field. Um, in the parallelogram, suppose that angle B equals 32 degrees, angle or line CD, CD, I'm not at CB, CD, right here, equals 80 inches, and then we have BC to equal 15 inches. 
We are asked to find the measure of AD. Well, notice that AD and BC are opposite sides. And we know in a parallelogram that opposite sides are congruent. So we know that AD equals BC. So AD equals 15 inches. Those properties are very helpful. All right, the next one, we have the same construction, but we want to find the measure of angle C. Well, notice um, what, do you, what would you consider angle B and angle C? Since I have a parallelogram, remember I have parallel lines. Do you consider the measure of angle B and the measure of angle C consecutive angles? And we know that a property of parallelograms, consecutive angles add up to be 180 degrees. So to find the measure of angle C, I'm going to say the measure of angle B plus the measure of angle C equals 180 degrees. I'm going to substitute because I do know the measure of angle B is 32 degrees. So I'm going to say 32 plus the measure of angle C equals 180 degrees. I'm going to subtract 32, solving algebraically. So my final answer, the measure of angle C equals 148 degrees. All right, and last one, we're going to use that same picture up there if it fits on my screen. We are asked to find the measure of angle D, the measure of angle D. Well, I want you to notice up here that angle D is opposite angle B. So we know that opposite angles are congruent in parallelograms. So we know that the measure of angle D equals the measure of angle B. So we know the measure of angle B is 32, so the measure of angle D equals 32 degrees. All righty, it's your turn to practice those skills. Um, so go ahead and pause this video, try the next three, check your progress, and then check your answers. All right, how'd you do on your answer key? Pretty good. All right, so let's just review those four properties and the definition that we can always remember to help us get more information. So the first one that we need to remember, opposite sides of a parallelogram are always congruent. The second thing, opposite angles, the angles across from each other are going to be congruent. Consecutive angles. Remember, there's two angles that make up consecutive angles. They're going to be supplementary. They are next to, right next to each other. Number four, if one angle equals 90, all the rest equal 90. And then we can't forget what the definition tells us about parallelograms. Both pairs of opposite sides are going to be parallel, hence its name. Woohoo! All right, let's keep going on some more properties. We're going to talk about the diagonals of a parallelogram now. Let's just review what a diagonal is. So the diagonals are segments connected by non-consecutive vertices. Non-consecutive vertices. So looking in this picture, notice B is consecutive to C. They're right next to. So the diagonal will connect the um, sides that are across or the vertices that are across from each other. So what do the diagonals do in a parallelogram? The diagonals will bisect each other. So wh what does that mean? I know that AP equals CP bisect. I also know that DP is equal to BP. 
which then in turn makes point P the what? And I'm going to check to see if you know what point P is. So property number one that we just learned, or property number one of the diagonals, but we'll continue our list of properties. Let's do property number five out of our list. The diagonals cut into two congruent parts, hence bisects. We've learned that word before. Alrighty, next. If a quadrilateral is a parallelogram, then each diagonal separates the parallelogram into two congruent triangles. So, you know, we have two diagonals. This one only shows one. So since they are both parallel, they are also opposite sides are congruent. We know that DB is congruent to DBD, so we can prove really parallelograms by SSS if we wanted to, but let's just say that the diagonals and our properties, um, we'll say one diagonal, how about that? Or how about each? Each diagonal cuts into two congruent triangles. Now it's gonna be really important to remember that because I have congruent triangles, all of my parts are congruent. So that would mean that that angle is congruent to that one because of CPCTC, their alternate X or interior. We also know that this angle is congruent to that one. Third angle theorem tells us that those angles are also congruent. So remember, um, the diagonals will all really give us angles that are congruent, so don't forget about that. All right, let's use those properties when we are trying to solve with algebra. So we have a picture over here, and we are told that it's a parallelogram. So now all of those properties apply. So we need to find R. Now, when I go in my picture and I look for R, I see R is WX, it's a side. And I know because it's a parallelogram that opposite sides are congruent. So I know that WX is going to equal ZY. So I can set those two equal to each other. 4R equals 18. 4R equals 18. Go ahead and solve for I'm going to divide both sides by 4. So R is going to equal 4.5. All right, so we just used opposite sides are congruent, one of our properties. Let's find S. So looking at my picture, oh, I noticed that S is on a diagonal. And notice that um, I have this side as 8S. And this side is 7s. Well, I just learned that the diagonals um, bisect each other. So they cut into two congruent parts. So if I have the hence hence midpoint as a, I know that za equals xa. So I can set those two equal to each other. 8r equals 7s plus 3. Subtract 7s, so s is going to equal 3. All right, and last one, we need to find t. So t, I notice, is right here in this angle. We'll remember something about the diagonals, that the diagonals cut the triangles into two congruent triangles. So if I'm just looking at where angle T is, I'm really looking at this triangle's angle. Alternate interior angles tell me that it is congruent to that angle. So I would say 2T equals 18. So T equals 9. All right, go ahead and stop this video. Do your check your progress. Here are your answers, and I'll see you back here soon for the second part of Chapter 6, Section 2.